Hello and welcome to The Visible Artist. My name is Sophie Loxton Lucas and this week I spoke to Laxmi Hussein in her Wembley studio, just a stone's throw from one of her most ambitious public art projects. Just as her work is intensely personal, both in terms of subject matter and her use of the colour blue, Lakshmi was very open about her life as an artist and a mother. Painting the female form in her distinctive blue, Lakshmi's work is celebrated across the art and design world. She is represented by Partnership Editions, and her client list includes the Royal Academy of the Arts, Lick, Vans, Diamond Art, and many, many more. We discuss her experience of working with an agent and online gallery, how she fosters this relationship whilst maintaining her own independent projects and a thriving social media presence, how she balances motherhood with a full-time artistic career, and her approach to large-scale public art commissions. I really hope you enjoy today's episode. Thank you so much for having me in your studio. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> it's, nice to, it's nice to have you in here. Mm. Do you have lots of visitors to your studio space? Not as many as I'd like, but then that's probably a good thing, <laughs> so it means I have to work. <laughs> Well, it's lovely to be here surrounded by your pieces. I think just to start with, can you describe your work? Yeah, um, I work sharing the body, sharing usually the female form. And I usually represent that in drawings and a lot of continuous line. I also often do paint and also paint figuratively and work mostly in the colour blue, which is what everyone recognises my work for. Mm. And that blue colour is a really, they have a real personal link to the blue, don't you? Yes, I do. It represents my mum. My mum passed away four years ago and I feel that by using this blue, it's it's connected to a lot of memories with my mum and connected to my childhood and things that I associate with who she was and so I feel like that's keeping her alive with me and also keeping her in in everything that I do she hasn't got to see this journey evolve it quite it quite in the way that it has in the last couple of years and I just feel like my sister tells me that she'd be so proud and I know that she would but I also feel like I really want to know (laughs) But obviously she's not here, but I think that's the way to keep her with me. Mm. Yeah, that's really special. And yeah, as you say, the blue is everywhere. You've even got it on your top, (laughs) (laughs) the paint. (laughs) It really is all present. Thank you. Yeah, no, it is. It is. And, you know, the more... The more that I'm in here, the more that things become blue. And it's it's just nice to have that also to surround myself in. It's the way that I process grief. And I think art is, is so special in that way, in that we can process so many things through it. And that's really where I, my journey's gone and how I want to share that with others. The colour that you're using is really personal, but then the actual figures and what you're drawing is also incredibly personal isn't it (laughs) (laughs) it's all well art is all about storytelling isn't it we all want to tell a story and those of us that draw or paint that's how we that's how we know most naturally to do and for me I so I studied architecture and it's such a it's a very rigid profession for someone who's always naturally been an artist and it is not uncommon that many architects go on to become artists and for me it was about confidence it was about believing that I could actually pursue art and that actually become a career and I you know I still kick myself that I'm sitting in this space (laughs) and this is my job and I can do things like this now you know I don't have to book time off to come and have a chat with someone (laughs) like you it has been a long journey but I originally started doing this because I had kids I didn't know how to express myself and a lot of parents often have this when they've spent so much time with a baby they feel like they've lost their identity and mothers often feel this and returning to work I felt like I didn't know how to talk to people I just felt like I'd been talking to a baby for so long (laughs) (laughs) that I didn't know who I was anymore and drawing helped me to reconnect with this body that had changed so dramatically, was still changing and I just started to share that and 
the response I got was the response that I still get is incredible mm. and I'm really glad that not only has it helped me but others really feel receptive to that and want to share their journeys with me and what they're going through mm. yes it's amazing and I can totally see why people would feel that way <laughs> That's so do, kind. do you find it strange seeing your work that is so personal and linked to your own body and others out there does it feel strange to see it say if it's a busy private view and it's on the wall or it's out on social media or shared on social media I think because it took me so long to get to this point at the moment I'm still on such a high that I'm like you actually want to come and see this and that's Mm. really that really is it means a lot to me and when I did the mural that I recently finished in Wembley Park I got so many DMs on Instagram saying I watched you every day I walked past you so many times I wanted to stop you but you were so hard at work (laughs) and I just want to tell you how much it's changed my commute to work or you know just my lunch break where we go and sit on the steps and that for me is just I can't believe that's happened (laughs) So are most of the people following you and collecting your work, are they women and are they mothers? I think there's a good mix of different people. I have a lot of followers who are following me because they want to share what I do and they want to learn from me. And I've got a lot of followers who do so attend my workshops. Mm. And then I have a different audience who purchase my work, who connect to my work on a much more personal level and want to have something that reminds them of who they are. And then I also have recently, more recently, because I do a lot of work with art brands, artists that follow and people that are associated with art institutions and wanting to share the journey of art. And and so I think there's a really good mix. Mm. And yeah, a lot of people are parents and that's such a nice thing because I think for me especially, motherhood is not documented as something that you can do as well as not being a mother like you know there are elements of your day where you're not mothering all day long I mean there are, <laughs> that's a strange thing to say because even now I'm thinking you know is my little one okay and that is still an element of mothering but it's nice to know that I'm not the only one juggling all of these things mm. and that we can share our journeys and still be inspiring Mm, absolutely and it's interesting you use the word juggling because (laughs) even in your practice you're taking your work in quite a lot of different directions yes (laughs) yes yeah no I do I've always liked to experiment and explore different things and I think there are lots of things going on in the studio but um that's the beauty of having a studio isn't it Mm. (laughs) there there's time for I say this time, but there is mostly time for exploring. And that's, that's, I think that's how we grow. Mm. Yeah. So you show your work, your fine art practice in more gallery spaces, don't you? But then you also take on commissions or lead workshops for brands. Yeah. How do you find balancing all of that? I don't know, because (laughs) I'm one of those people that (laughs) I have a real difficulty saying no to something. (laughs) I'll I'll often get an email in my in my inbox and I'll be like, oh, that sounds really fun. And to be honest, I've never had something where I thought it doesn't sell fun. (laughs) (laughs) But then I really am like getting really pumped about it. And then before I know it, I'm like, Uh, I've scheduled so many things for (laughs) such a short period of time (laughs) but I think you know when you're I've got three kids so for me almost nothing is impossible and (laughs) we'll figure out a way even if you don't (laughs) sleep which is never anyway (laughs) yeah so I was love what I loved what you said before we started recording about how your son often comes into your studio and spends time in here whilst you're painting (laughs) yeah really immersing him in your art from an early age well my older two were also very much part of my studio life when they were much smaller um and because I had, I still had a full time job at the time. I only actually have been doing this full time for just over a year. Mm. And before that, it was always my kind of side hustle, and my dream was for it to not be. Mm. And so 
my hours were so different before so I would often come into the studios in the evenings I'd definitely be here on the weekends and they would have to come with me (laughs) my husband often works weekends and that would mean that so many studio weekends were with the kids and they just adapt like Mm. art is very therapeutic for most people and it's it should be accessible to everybody and I think like even if you don't become an artist there should be an element of art in your life and for my kids I've never forced it upon them they've just been in the environment so Mm. if they wanted to pick up a pen they you know everything was there for them but equally if they decide if they knew that we were coming to the studio and they wanted to bring a bunch of toys then that was that was up to them Mm. and I always made it like you know this is just another environment that we're in and like being at home it's it's really free for you to adapt to how you want you mentioned that you became a full-time artist a year ago yes how did that come about was there something that (laughs) was there a catalyst for that the catalyst was the baby (laughs) (laughs) I've had to and juggled for so long but there was quite a gap between my middle who's eight going on nine and then Eden the baby he is one nearly two so there's quite a big age gap between them and it rocked the boat quite a bit <laughs> let's put it that way I mean we love him so much he's he's a force <laughs> <laughs> just having three meant that working full-time in my previous job wouldn't have been possible and also the dream really was to become an artist full-time and my you know I still keep in touch with my old boss and they're um, two of them they're incredible they're very much like family and they knew that this is what I was pushing for Mm. so after I had my baby and it was peak lockdown you know he was in June uh, 2020 Mm. we were all at home anyway and I'd spent so much time with the kids I was like I don't want to miss out on this now that there's three of them and not that the two weren't enough but (laughs) It was just, we had so much time together Mm. and I had been working on my art before he was born and it started to really kick off where even though I'd been working on it before then, I just, it, that seemed to be the year that I felt if it's not now, then I'll never, I'll never do it. Mm. And I haven't looked back. Like at first, yeah, it was really, really hard. You know, some months I didn't have any income. And obviously once you've committed to a studio, you're like, yes. I need to find that income. Mm. I did have some savings, but not very much. And, you know, I'm not talking like some people want to have a year, but I didn't have that. And it was very much like, we're just going to see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't, even if there are difficult months, I'm like, I need to figure out Mm. a way to not have another difficult month for a long time. Mm. And it's just very much your drive, isn't it? Once you've tasted it, you don't want to go back. Mm. It's really putting pressure on yourself, but I think you need (laughs) sometimes that pressure is good. Yeah, and, you know, thankfully I've had some really amazing projects over Mm. the last year that have really helped me to catapult. My, My social media has grown a lot and... I mean, I work so hard. There's so many hours involved and I'm sure so many artists relate to this. Mm. But it's something that you you just... There is nothing that weighs up in in what I get from it. Well, I'd love to ask you about these projects. But first, <laughs> perhaps we'll talk about your experience with partnership editions. How does that work? How do you find showing with them? So actually, their founder, Georgia, approached me when I was about to have Eden I said look I've come across your work and I really I really love your work and I'd love to chat more about how we can work together and you become an artist on our roster and I was just like blown away I was like and that was kind of the start of when things started to change and that was when I started to get seen a bit more and to have that land in my inbox and I'd wanted to be a part of partnership editions for so long, like I did, in, that was kind of one of my goals that I'd aspired to. I was blown away. I didn't, I didn't know if it was really happening, but I was just having my baby at the time. And so I said to Georgia, 
I'm literally just about to, or I think I just had a baby, but there's nothing that I can work on at the moment. <laughs> so can we touch base again in a few months? And she said, yes, yes, of course. You know, so many of our artists are mums and I understand completely and we'll touch base when you're ready. And we did. And the conversation is very much a conversation. It's so easygoing. Georgia and her team are so supportive. Basically, they have collections throughout the year that are what they call drops. And all the artists that are part of the Partnership Editions family, we all opt in to create works for each date. And we submit them. And... Georgia and her team are really supportive and they help with things like establishing price points and also working with press really closely to get other opportunities for us, direct commissions, and very much, you know, being really hands-on like an agent Mm. and supporting us because we're all, we're all essentially trying to run a business, but we're artists and it's such a personal thing to do but you also have to have a business element to it and that's where working with someone like partnership editions is such a good complement to trying to be an artist absolutely and some of those elements that you mentioned i'm thinking particularly pricing and lots of artists really struggle with that oh absolutely there are a lot of things that people have said to me like every time you sell something you should put your prices up Mm -hmm. and And although that sounds like such an easy thing to do, one, it's about confidence. It's about how much you value your own work. And sometimes it makes no sense at all, but you'll have two pieces of work which sit next to each other. And, you know, from a consumer perspective, you'll think, well, they're the same size. They're kind of the same materials. Why aren't they the same price? Mm. But it could just be that the artist is so attached to that particular piece that this is what it's going to take for you to (laughs) prize that out of their hands. Um, And I know that sounds really silly, but the work that we put on paper or on canvas or whatever is sometimes so personal Mm. and it takes a lot to to prize that out of you. And it's a lot of self-doubt sometimes and reassessing whether you actually think it's valuable enough to be shared with the world that Mm. sometimes you feel like you've poured so much of your heart and soul into that one piece it's just uh, you can't go anywhere unless (laughs) someone's willing to part with that (laughs) that amount of money I mean like I have pieces here which so many people have said are you ever going to sell that and sometimes I'm like I'm not ready I really am not ready because they are like babies (laughs) (laughs) Well, partnership editions are, I was so impressed by how they present their artists that it must feel exciting to look on their site and see your work and see yourself. Yeah. Almost surreal. No, it imagine. really does. And, you know, we've had some, we've had a great year actually. We've, we, they had an exhibition in October, November. And I did a couple of workshops there as well. And then I've also had some really incredible commissions that hopefully I can share more about later in the year. Yeah, some really really fun projects outside of, you know, just selling my paintings with them. Mm. It's not just an online gallery. It's much more than that. And the whole team know who I am and I know the whole team and I can pick up the phone and we can chat about Mm. things that I'm doing. And they're all just always so eager to know what you're getting on with. And you really need a team like that to back you sometimes because working solo for so long, you know, like I said earlier, self-doubt can really, that's the only thing about being an artist is you spend a lot of time by yourself. Yes. And you do really need a community of artists and creatives Mm -hmm. who you can kind of bounce back at your ideas against. Absolutely. Do you know the other artists on their roster? Must be a nice community to be part of there. Yeah, not all of them, but I've got in touch with quite a few of them via Instagram. And, you know, it was very welcoming on social media. We were in lockdown when I joined. And so many of them put, when it was announced that I was having my first debut collection with Partnership Editions, that a lot of them put in the comments, congratulations, welcome to the family. 
And since then, you know, we will often congratulate each other on their new collections. And yeah, it's so nice to have, even just visually from a from a distance through social media, to have other artists to see and enjoy their work and you mm. immerse yourself in, in a, an environment that's not just people who want to talk about your work, but to be able to talk about other people's work. Mm. And do you sell your work exclusively? through the platform would you sell it anywhere else or work with other galleries i do occasionally work but we all kind of have that conversation together yeah i think it's also like if you're going to work with someone and they're going to help you on your journey you also need to be quite transparent and you know you've committed and they've committed and it's just like a friendship a relationship you need to with anyone you need to be transparent about what you're going to do and what your intentions are and they will also support me in decision making so I like to keep that like and it, with anyone that I work with that if I'm going to work with them on a long-term basis I like to keep those conversations open mm. and honest well these days there's so many different opportunities in the art world it's yes. can't really define the relationship you have to be open to being a bit yeah, flexible don't you exactly. on both sides because things might come up that are unexpected yeah I did have quite a, a large audience before I joined partnership edition so although they represent me in quite a large capacity I often get a lot of people approach me directly and brands approach me di- directly and I will start the conversation and sometimes because we're already immersed in these conversations, I'll continue those conversations. And that's where, you know, I still need to be quite open and say, look, I'm having a chat with so-and-so. And I think anyway, when you think about joining an agent and someone represent you, they're just conversations that you need to keep open. And it's not about stepping on people's toes. It's people like you invest in other people they're also investing in you and to grow we all need to grow together Mm. in order to be successful eh? yes and tell me about the projects that you mentioned before that kind of catapulted you into a new level (laughs) this past year what what are some of those highlights um oh so I worked with Astrid and Miu they're a jewelry brand that was really fun because we worked for a whole quarter on several different projects I did a bit of a social media campaign with them where I immersed their kind of jewellery in in my work and we shared that together and that was quite fun because I wear a lot of jewellery and I often will photograph my hands because I wear a lot of rings and I think that the jewellery that I have is so special to me it was nice to share that as part mm. of my art as well and then we worked on some tattoo designs which were just a really a couple of really small drawings but in my style and it's really exciting to see that on another canvas yeah being the actual body and then we finished off where I had drawn some complimentary figures to the tattoos but then they had them put on all of their shop fronts so for the whole month of international women's international women's month well it wasn't the I always forget what it's called. <laughs> I just International Women's Day and then there's yeah, Women's Month, like History Month. Yes, Women's History In, Month. So the whole March. of March, <laughs> yeah. my decals were on their store. Mm. So lots and lots. And uh, they've got several stores over London. So lots and lots of people were tagging me on Instagram and friends were like, oh my gosh, I just walked past. <laughs> I didn't know that this was you until I saw your name. And my friends and family were really, really proud. And lots of them went and visited. So that was really nice. Then at the same time, we also worked with Vans. That was a really fun project where they invited me to their central London store and we did a whole day of workshops inspired by International Women's Day. And everyone that came was just so lovely. Their team are really, really fab. And they've got a dedicated customs workshop, so everything is just like... (laughs) All cupboards are like stacked full of amazing (laughs) pens, and I was just like in this incredible world of like... And they're all so beautifully (laughs) categorised. Everything is colour-coordinated. I was like, whoever organised this can come and organise my studio. (laughs) 
But yes, yeah, so that was really fun and everyone really enjoyed like drawing women on their trainers. Is that what the workshops were? My workshop was, yeah. So it was about three or four hours of us just adorning trainers from vans and they all had a lot of fun. There were some really, really incredible artists there who came and joined us mm. and decorated their shoes. And then I finished up International Women's Week with a really big mural up here in Wembley Park right at the foot of the stadium and it's something that I've been working on with the estate for quite a while and it was curated by Zoe Allen who's a really good friend of mine now and um, so she curated a whole art trail here Wembley's quite unique in that it's got quite a few public art installations and they change throughout the year and so she curated an all-female art trail for International Women's Day. It was launched, I think, the week before or that the week of International Women's Day. And the trail has lots of beautiful pieces. There's the Spanish Steps. There's a photography collection all by female photographers. There's an amazing floor mural in the playground well it's astroturf it's not really a playground but um right at the f- literally at the foot of the stadium close to my piece which is by Lois O'Hara who's this really fun and quirky it's so bright and colorful and my son loves running <laughs> over it every day and then you've got the steps which are the display steps that I did also quite close to the stadium and I painted them all in my signature blue And then a nod to the female form with lots of different forms up and down and across it. What I really like about the art trail is that one, it's public and accessible to all. Mm. And two, you can touch it. Anyone who's got kids. (laughs) Actually, my friend, I'm supposed to meet her at a gallery this week. And she said in the morning we were about to meet at the gallery. She was like, I just remembered that the last time I went there, my kids pulled down an entire fabric um, <laughs> installation and got caught under it. I was like, just remember now. <laughs> In my head, I was thinking this, and she was like, yeah, so maybe we shouldn't take our two toddlers. <laughs> and that's exactly what I mean when I t- I've talked of a bit about what how important it is that art is accessible. Mm. And it doesn't mean that all art needs to be this accessible. Uh, I understand that, you know, some art is really precious and it's more about the the visual aspect of it. But there does need to be art that is accessible, that is free, and that doesn't have that sort of, I can't touch it. Mm, Because (laughs) so many people are parents and... I often don't go to a gallery because I'm too scared of what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that there are only certain galleries that I can go to, like mm-hmm. the Tate Modern, where the Turbine Hall yes. is meant to be thrashed by kids. <laughs> you know? But yeah, it's, it's that, that's what I mean. Like, So tell me about the steps, because it's a really big project, isn't it? So yes. You've got quite a few videos on your Instagram stories of it developing the project. Yeah, I documented the whole process just because I was like, I don't know when I'm going to do this again. This Mm. is the first time I've ever done something like this. And uh, it also meant that I had this fun element of looking back over it myself, over what I'd achieved each day. So I painted it over just over two weeks. But when you count the days, it was probably about five or six days. Okay, yeah. Because we had a horrendous bout of rain <laughs> and whatever. There was some. Day, there was one particular day where we literally, it was bright sunshine, we painted one section and then it poured with rain and the paint started leaking. <laughs> oh, it was so awful. But yeah, I painted these steps called the splay steps in Wembley, which is part of, if you haven't been to Wembley for a long time, you will be shocked because... It's just so, so developed now and there's shops and there's cafes and before it was just industrial. You only ever came to this part of Wembley if you lived here or if you were going to the stadium or Mm. arena. arena. And now you've got, you know, you've got the designer outlet, you've got Box Park, you've got food everywhere, you've got a market once a month. It's just so fun and it's so alive. 
Um, and my studio sits right in the mm. centre, not far from the steps. But um, it was so fun. There were these concrete steps. I had a few challenges in that I try to work with products that have less of an impact on the environment. So for me, I really wanted to work with a water-based paint, which meant I had to do a lot of testing to know how long this would last and you know how it would stick and all of that kind of stuff. But it's held up pretty well. <laughs> <It's not bad. laughs> but it was such a big challenge because it's such a big canvas. Yes. And we had such a short time frame from approval of the project it was like less than three weeks to when it was going to be unveiled and that meant that I had to get my skates on. My sister helped me for three days. Some of the female artists within my studios, they all came and joined me for some of their time. They were incredible, you know, they just got on with it and I couldn't have done it without (laughs) them. (laughs) But it also is important and it's testament to asking your your art community for Mm. help. They will help. Yeah, that sounds really special. And it looked as though you had to actually paint, almost paint it, create a blank canvas before you could even start, which is quite a a big undertaking in itself. Because it was concrete. And so I painted the vertical, the rises of the steps, and I didn't paint the flat aspect Mm. because obviously rain. I also did a lot of research on the paint because I was painting it in the public domain. That was another reason why I wanted it to be non-toxic because so many people would walk past and I was thinking if I was walking past my kids of course I don't want it I don't want someone to be painting such a big element with a toxic paint and also it was also to do with what I had to submit for my proposal but in general I I try to work with things that have less of an impact on the environment because of also the colour that I work with and the concrete that I was working on I had to paint everything white first yes (laughs) And that took a day in itself, and I had to do two coats of that white undercoat. And then we had to do two coats of the blue on top. And then the fun part was just painting the figures Mm. on top. But that (laughs) that couldn't do for about three or four days. And you're itching to really, like, see the project develop. That was the hardest thing to do. (laughs) And did you plan that out or did you just paint? Because it's such a huge scale to Mm. be painting your your figures onto. Yeah, there was so much planning because obviously I have to, to submit the proposal, I have to show a visual element of what it is actually going to look like and also because it's in the public we also still have a lot of censorship yeah so i had to be a bit sensitive to that feedback because of it showing nude forms yeah and nipple gate yeah (laughs) (laughs) although i did sneak a few (laughs) it's so abstract my work that I don't think you can... I mean, you you can tell it's the female form. And also then you've got a sign saying it's landscapes of women. So, <laughs> you know, it's not really it's not really something that you can hide. Mm. But it, it still makes me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we planned it. There were se- several mock-up drawings. And at some point I was like, you're going to have to kind of understand that this is kind of what it's going to look like. But it's so hard to draw something that's 3D on a photo of something that's 3D, if mm. that makes sense. Yes, yeah. I took photos from so many angles, but I'm like, I've never done this before. These steps have never been painted before. Part of my work is going to translate slightly differently once it's actually on there. So I'll be sensitive to the kind of forms that you don't want to display, but at the same time, you've asked me to do this. Yes, yeah. And now you've painted so large, as that reflected back into your own practice and now you want to paint larger in your studio. I was painting another mural in tandem here in my (laughs) studio. (laughs) So I also did an International Women's Day supper club with Marguerite, who are a creative women's platform. Mm -hmm. And we did an incredible supper club. And when I walked into the video at the venue in... 
think it was February with Joanna, who's the founder of Marguerite. And we did it in Tart by London. They have this massive, massive wall at the back. And they wanted to display my work, but we couldn't hang anything. We couldn't physically hang it to the walls because they've got a beautiful textured surface. Mm. But the back of the venue has a wall that's slightly proud and at the top you could hang something so it could uh, drape across this wall Mm -hmm. and the wall was about five or four meters wide and I just walked into there and I was like imagine if there was something across that back wall and so I decided to set myself the task of saying yes to one too many (laughs) projects but at the same time I was painting this mural in tandem on raw canvas in my studio and it literally goes from where we're sitting now to the window, which is the other end of the studio. Yeah, it's quite a few meters, like six <laughs> yeah. meters. And so I had no room to walk around it, but I painted that as well. So, yeah, it was incredible. And I kind of want to declutter the studio completely so that I can hang another one and paint mm. another one. Yes, I imagine it looked really dramatic. Yeah, it looked so fun. And... I wish I had it up for you today, but yeah. I've packed it away. <laughs> Did you paint it on the floor? Or? I painted it yeah. on the floor, yeah. Before we finish today, I wanted to ask you actually about Instagram. You're really good at documenting <laughs> your projects. You did that really ambitious, large-scale steps project Thank and you, you managed to document it which I think some artists would just be too intimidated <laughs> like wouldn't be able to even think about doing that. And you do post and you do have a following on Instagram. So how do you find that? How do you find managing that alongside your practice? It is another job. Yeah. (laughs) It is what people... And when people say, I don't know how you find the time, it, it is another job. Instagram is one of those things where, you know, you have to keep momentum going because not only if you don't keep the momentum going, you can go off so quickly... It's a way for you to also look back and, for me especially, to look back and see where you've experimented with things and you've really liked things and perhaps they will reappear in future work. But managing it is a feat. I love to document videos just because for some reason it just became really fun for me. And then looking at things even like stirring a paint pot. (laughs) Like... It's, it is, you know, some of those things get me the most engagement. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but I also really like watching that. Like, I'm just standing here and I'm just stirring this paint pot and I could do this for hours. <laughs> and people, watch, people like to watch that. Mm-hmm. But also it is really, you know, you're trying to tell a story and you shouldn't be afraid to tell your story. That is a platform for you to do so. And if that's not the platform for you, then find whatever works. But... For me, it's been great in that it's people think that you've got a large following. It didn't happen overnight. It took Mm. years and years and years. And some years you have really good years and some years it is really slow. But for me, it works. It doesn't work for everybody. And I've found so many special people there that I've connected to artists who I really value their opinions now that I've met through Instagram even people that are not artists who really value my work and we've become really good friends or we've connected outside of my work, you know, just through having kids or just because we live next to each other. And I think people underestimate because it is now so commercial that it can be a really friendly place as well. And I think that's what's valuable in it. And lastly, before we finish, and this is quite an open-ended question <laughs> doesn't have to be the piece but if you had a piece of advice for an artist starting out or early on in their career and wanting to make the leap into being a full-time artist I mean what, what would you say to them I'd definitely say to keep going if there's value in the, your work for you and it's where you find passion you will get there sometimes we have this element of I'm not We can't look too far into the future because we don't know what's going to happen. And even if you, you can even be the most successful person and tomorrow it it doesn't come. But I think, you know, take your time, enjoy what you do. If you don't enjoy what you do, that's not going to translate and people aren't going to enjoy it either. And if you enjoy it, you'll make, you'll make it happen. 
Well, that's great advice. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me no, today. It's been a pleasure. Coming. It's been really nice. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Please follow Lakshmi at This Lakshmi and the podcast at The Visible Artist Podcast. This is the last episode of season two. So thank you so much to everyone who's downloaded, liked, followed the podcast. I really appreciate your support. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. And I can't wait to bring you season three.